Excellent. Excellent. All right. Now that we have the technical issues ironed out here, we're going to be talking about Tmux and terminal sharing and what that can mean for you and your administration slacks security needs. So what is terminal multiplexing? So I don't know about any of y'all, but before I learned about this, I used to have a dozen or more terminal windows open and I had long running processes in some, I was uh, tailing files, uh, you know, had a couple of those. I had uh, like maybe a web server up and running because I was pulling files for my security usages. And I just got really frustrated with how that all ended up working out. And so I went looking for a solution and Tmux was it. So what Tmux allows us to do is basically to have a client server model to run multiple terminals. And I'll explain that in greater detail as we go forward. So let's just go ahead and start Tmux. Uh, we're gonna uh, provide the argument that we're going to do a new session and we're going to name it besides okay. And we'll just run that. So we dropped in here. The only thing that changed is we now have this bar down at the bottom that gives us some information. Besides OK is the name of the session, which is the uh, entire enchilada. Uh, we have just one uh, window, zero, and it has automatically applied the name bash, and the star indicates that we are currently on that window. Uh, the name of my box and the time date is over here on the right. All of these are configurable if you want to get down into that. So what do I mean when I say session? So I'm going to type the modifier control B and then D. I'll explain that in greater detail in just a moment. And then we're going to do LS. So I have three sessions running. Uh, one is named the number two, one is besides OK, and the other one is named number one. So we're going to attach uh, to the uh, A is shorthand for attach. We can also type it longhand, T for the target, and we're going to reconnect to B sides OK. So this is right where we left it, and we can uh, echo hello B sides. So if I uh, drop out here and then I Tmux attach uh, to two, I don't see that. That's because these are completely different sessions and we see different views from inside each one of them. So I can then uh, echo uh, number two and we'll leave that and we'll come back to that later. All right, so we're gonna reattach to the first session to B sides, okay. Okay, so we, we now have sessions. The next thing that we need to talk about is what's called the prefix. So by default, Tmux uses the control B key, and then you type whatever uh, action you want to happen. So in this case, I typed the percent sign to split my window in half. So now I have two panes inside this window. Now, if I wanted to create another window, I could do prefix control B, and then I could do C to create a new window. So as you can see down here in the bar, we now have zero that is bash and one that is bash. And then the star indicating that this is the current window that I'm viewing. So if I run uh, what's something, um, uh, uh, so let's do uh, tail uh, var log. Uh, what's something that's going to be busy? Uh, debug should work fine. Okay, so we're going to leave that running. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have that running in that window. And so if we jump back, uh, so we can do uh, whatever commands we have here. You're pounding away with nmap, scanning things. Uh, you know, that's just the, that's not gonna be a long running task. But if you have something that's going to be running for a while, we can detach from this and then attach to another session. So if we did tmux a uh, t1, so then we're back into a new session. We now only have the single window that is bash. 
So uh, we are lacking all of that state that we left from the last one. So how do you kill a session? Now that we've created, we've learned to attach and detach to get rid of one. Uh, you can either close all of the windows inside of a session. So if you just exit, uh, that means that uh, the, the session one has gone away. There was no windows left inside of it. So Tmux went ahead and got rid of the entire session. Uh, the other way that you can get rid of it is if we do uh, Tmux kill dash sesh, uh, T for target, and then do number two. That now got rid of our number two. So we should just have besides okay remaining. So let's go ahead and attach. Uh, since we only have one Tmux session, I can just do Tmux A and it will automatically fill in because there's no other targets for me to be attaching to. Okay, so we've done session management. Uh, we've created, we've listed, we've detached, we've killed them. Uh, we have the option to, if we do a prefix and then dollar sign, we can rename the session. So we can do besides Oklahoma 2020. And as you can see, it just shortens it because it doesn't want to keep pushing my windows off, but this session is now named besides OK 2020. Uh, so if what you originally named a session, you end up changing it later, your needs or what you're just using it for changes, it's easy to go ahead and rename those. Now, by the same token, we can go ahead and rename uh, windows uh, and jump around between them. So let's go ahead and do that some. So we're gonna go ahead and create uh, a couple more windows just to make this easy to show off here. Uh, so we'll do echo four. Uh, uh, then we'll do prefix, and then the numbers that are in front of these allows us to automatically jump back to them. So if I press zero, I'm going to immediately jump back to our original window. Um, so let's go ahead and jump back to four, and then we can do prefix in to go uh, back to the last one, uh, control uh, prefix, control B, and P to go to the previous. So if I do that again, you can see that we've jumped to window three. Uh, let's see. Uh, to rename a window, uh, you do prefix comma, and then that allows you to rename this. So we will name this one uh, fun. Uh, let's go to uh, prefix in to jump to the next one. So we're now in uh, window four. So we'll rename this one uh, not fun. Okay, so uh, now let's jump back to window zero to go here. So earlier I did prefix uh, percent sign to split it vertically, uh, which I can keep doing that until we get to uh, just crazy, entirely unuseful levels of uh, division where it's hard to read that. But that's okay because sometimes you may need to uh, adjust how this is going. And we have several different options inside Tmux of how to organize these. So the easiest, if you just need to get information from this one on the right, uh, you can press uh, prefix, then hold the control key and press the arrow, and it's going to drag it out and squish the other ones if I just need to temporarily uh, look at what's going on in this window. On the other hand, I can press uh, prefix spacebar, and it's going to auto sort them for me. And if you continue to press that, it will uh, intelligently try several different options in order to figure out what you really want. So let's say on this case, I was uh, looking at a log message uh, up here in the top window. Uh, so we're, uh, uh, we're viewing something, but I only want to see a few lines of it. So if I press control B uh, and then hold the control, I can go ahead and move this up and give that less screen real estate but still allow me to be able to use these other windows uh, running whatever I'm running. So uh, Metasploit or whatever else I'm attempting to do inside of this window. So let's say that you're really deep into this and suddenly uh, Metasploit pops up that it found something interesting and you really want to look at this one screen in the middle. And so you can control B and control and like make it bigger, but that's a really 
tedious option and you don't want to uh, mess up the uh, layout that you've set up previously. What we can do is we can do prefix Z and it will pop it out into a uh, full screen. And this is just a temporary. If I go ahead and press uh, prefix Z again, it drops it right back to where we at and we can continue the testing that we had been working on. So getting rid of panes. So uh, panes disappear uh, when you go ahead and exit the process. Uh, it just uh, auto cleans that up and then uh, it doesn't do any sort of intelligent uh, sorting uh, to, to fix this. We'd have to do the uh, other ways we learned of uh, rearranging the windows uh, in order to clean it up. Uh, so unfortunately, it's not quite that clever. So the other way of getting rid of a window is we can go ahead and do prefix uh, ampersand and that kills this entire window. So it will get rid of everything in here. All uh, five of those panes will disappear. So if I go ahead and do that, uh, you can see that zero has disappeared down here and we now just have one through four. Uh, so to kill a pain by itself, let me see here, rearrange, I believe it's just control V, Z, yeah, Z to, to delete that. Okay, what else do we want to show here? Oh, this is important. Uh, so let's say uh, you're working inside of a split like this, and what you want to do is take a pane and move it to a window. So uh, I have a bunch of, of uh, uh, important information here, and I want to pull that out into its own window so I can then expand. Like I found a finding or something interesting, I want to dig into it more, and I want the ability to make that entire window its own uh, individual unit. So if I go ahead and press uh, prefix and then exclamation mark, uh, you can see that it has gone ahead and backfilled the zero and moved the important pane into its own window. And that way we can go ahead and, uh, you know, divide this up uh, as we like uh, in order to uh, dig further into that finding or whatever we're, we're looking at. Uh, let's see here real quick other things to show. Okay, uh, so let's jump back a moment uh, into sessions. So this entire, all of these panes and windows are all running in this session. Uh, what makes detach uh, so important? Uh, why is this so powerful? And one of the, the main things people think of uh, whenever they think of Tmux and the utility it brings to them. So if you were uh, SSH'd into a box and you are running things and for whatever reason uh, you shut your laptop the power you had a network drop the SSH connection closed itself all of your processes inside that SSH session terminate you lose the the data if they haven't finished uh, and written to the uh, to a file somewhere all of that is gone what Tmux allows us is because it's a server client setup uh, the server is running wherever you invoke it. So if I SSH into somewhere first and then run Tmux, uh, when I reconnect my SSH session and then I reattach to my Tmux, everything is exactly how I left it. Uh, and so that is a really powerful ability that uh, has saved my bacon more than once for sure, uh, just because you never know what's going to happen. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Do we have any questions, John? I haven't not seen any, sir. Gotcha. Let's see. Okay, well, I think that's it for the basics of Tmux. I do have a couple other things I wanted to show you all. Uh, so I guess we can go ahead and jump right into that. Okay, so if we jump out of Tmux for a second here, uh, I want to talk about a Tmux fort. Uh, it's called uh, Teamate, and you can find it at teamate.io. Uh, this is a super useful uh, tool. 
which we will go ahead and show off here. Uh, basically what this does is it allows you to um, work with other people a lot easier uh, and it saves you from having to create a user and allowing them to SSH into your box. Uh, sometimes that is more difficult to uh, accomplish if you're behind NAT firewalls that you don't control. What Teammate does is it reaches out to uh, this server. Uh, you can host your own or you can use the one that uh, Teammate, the open source project, provides. And basically what it does is it gives a uh, DNS name that you can SSH to that then connects you back to the local session. So if I go ahead. Oh, it's not finding my keys. Okay. Um, a little bit of uh, live troubleshooting here for y'all. Okay, so as you can see at the bottom, uh, we get told SSH uh, blah, blah, blah dot teammate dot io. Uh, if you all connect to that, you will connect to my box. I will be shutting this down temporarily, so don't try. Uh, but we can do uh, teammate uh, show uh, sessions. Uh, I have that command wrong here. Show messages. So if for some reason that you did not capture it when it was down at the bottom, this gives you a web SSH. Uh, it also allows you to have read-only sessions. Uh, so it makes it a little easier to uh, share your TMUX session if you want to remote debug or your pair programming or, you know, the sky's the limit on how you want to use that. Uh, if you don't want to install Teammate, you don't want to run your own server, you don't want to trust them, there is a kind of work around to using tmux, but it's a little bit more involved. So uh, if I go uh, tmux ls, I still have a window. So if I do a uh, full view, you can see that I have a client and server blog. And at the moment, they're in my personal home directory, uh, Austin, Austin, I'm the only one that can read and write to them. So if I allow somebody else to SSH into my box, uh, they cannot attach to this tmux session. But if I, uh, either in my tmux config or on startup, uh, you can pass in uh, all sorts of params on uh, how to use it, and you can change the socket path. And so if I do uh, tmux uh, s uh, temp, uh, then I have to give it a name. Uh, so I need to do new, and then... That just a uh, lower cap size. Let's see here. Of course, I tested this all earlier, and now it's not working. Well, apparently I'm not going to figure that out live for you, but it is possible. Uh, there's plenty of tutorials out there that will allow you to uh, run it. Yes, I am paying respects to the demo gods. I did not bleed enough apparently last night. And you can host your own teammate server. Um, I don't see a reason why you would have a problem hosting it in AWS. Uh, that being said, I've not tried. I have my own server out there, and that's what I've used in the past. So. Uh, I don't imagine AWS would stop you, but if it does, don't blame me. <laughs> Sorry, I can't be more helpful in regards to the specific of that one. All right, so I have one more thing I want to share with you guys, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, change what screen I'm sharing. So let's see here. All right, so 
There's also one more project that I didn't really have time uh, in my talk to get around to, but it's called Tmuxinator. So after you've used Tmux for a while, your, your general use cases are going to start showing of how you use Tmux. And it can be kind of annoying to have to, you know, get everything set up and you, you split it the same ways every time and you run the same commands and I mean, you got it pixel perfect or, uh, you know, exactly how you want it to look. And you're like, I don't really want to do that every time. Tmuxinator is the answer to your woes. So what Tmuxinator lets you do is you can uh, script out entirely how you want your Tmux sessions to begin. And it lets you do everything. Uh, here I am using Tmux bindings in Firefox. That doesn't work. Uh, so it will let you name the session however you want. Uh, so let's say you're doing uh, Ruby development every time. Uh, so you want the uh, entire thing to be named uh, Ruby. You have um, your windows. Uh, you have one for like uh, logs. You have one for rails. Uh, however you have it set up, it allows you to script that. And so you just invoke a single tmuxinator can command, you pass in the config that you want, and then it will go ahead and load that all up for you the same every time, on time, all the time. So uh, I know that I'm pushing up on the edge of my speaking slot here, and I wanted to give uh, one last shout out if anybody had any questions, anything in particular I did not address, anything of this sort. John's looking for me here. Doesn't look like it. All right, guys. Uh, I will be. I will be in the uh, the Slack if you do think of anything else later, or you just want to uh, jibber jabber about command line tools. I'm happy to talk about my obsession. Uh, thank you for spending the time today listening to me, and uh, hope to see you guys around the rest of B sides. <laughs>